Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic. Welcome to the official preview of the second round of the final phase, also called the round of 16, I guess. This is the top 16 coaches and uh, I'll have a look at every matchup, every team, so we can see what's going on. So first up we've got Wenteros versus Surveillance. Um, Wenteros beat Sarhu in the previous round, which was also Skaven. Surveillance went past Matabolitos with his undead, and they were both group winners. So that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> We've got, so this is Wenteros, Ruble, Ruby BL champions, Ruble, I don't know, whichever you call it. And uh, this has got a somewhat similar team to me. He's gone the two Witch Elves, the four Blitzers, and all the positionals. He's got three assistant coaches plus a apothecary rather than one assistant coach in reserve. Six and two threes, not much difference in that at all. Honestly, two rerolls and uh, two wrestle witch elves. I do like the two wrestle witch elves. The reason I went with a block and one block, one wrestle was that I prefer a little bit more solidity, but definitely the wrestle's better for, you know, getting the ball sacks that you want. He's up against Surveillance, who is a PlayStation coach in the top 16. There you go. He's got 12 Skaven with an Apothecary, three rerolls, plus Leaders, who's got four rerolls, lots of rerolls. He is a little bit susceptible to getting beaten up, right? Because he's only got 12 players plus the Napo. He's lost Wrestle on a gutter, but the rest is pretty standard stuff for Skaven. Leader thrower, block sidestep, strip ball, gutters. Guard Blitzer, Mighty Blow Blitzer, and Juggernaut Rat Ogre. So, yeah, it's a funny matchup, Skaven versus Dark Elves. I think it does favour the Dark Elves, but because because it's Skaven versus Dark Elves, because it's Skaven, Skaven can just roll dice, right? Skaven are a pretty annoying team, to be honest. <laughs> and, and even if you've got a good matchup versus them, you can still come unstuck. So next up we've also got two two more group winners. Frankie129 got past Slay Black Mage and Strider eliminated Dragu. Strider with Wood Elves um, beat Lizardmen. Frankie's Undead beat Slade's Humans. So we can have a look at these teams here. Um, Frankie has the double guard mummies, which is pretty normal, isn't it? One tackle is also pretty normal. And three skills on the ghoul. So this is a completely standard tabletop undead build. Three rerolls. Mostly skilled ghouls. It's a completely fine team. I do think they are going to struggle a little bit versus Strider. I don't think undead into Wood Elves is a great matchup for the undead. And of course Strider, the, he won the season two finals. That, you know that we did that in Montpellier in January the forerunner to this event and you know he won that with lizard men now he's in here with what else this is a pretty nice team honestly i really like the sidestep to try and deal with one turns a little bit he's got a strength six stand firm and he's got a sidestepper strip ball is essential of course the leader thrower most people have a couple of catchers a couple of dodge linemen and a couple of wrestle linemen this is the prototypical wood elf build i would say um and I think if it was tabletop, you'd swap the sidestep for tackle because, you know, what else, uh, Amazons exist. But I think for online, this is the kind of gold standard build that you would expect to see. And then it's just like little uh, little variations of this in the other teams. So, well, yeah, so I, I, I was trying to do predictions as well on that. So I'd say Wenteros is favoured versus surveillance, but very, very dodgy. I think in this, I think Strider... Has, is holding all the cards. I think Strider is favourite versus Frankie. Now we've got Yatsik versus Sparkus. Yatsik won the won that Orc Mirror by just beating up Brock. Um, it was pretty brutal. He won the coin toss every every time. He won it in three times, and he won it in overtime. And one game, he completely obliterated Rock. So that was that was pretty brutal. Um, so, you know, came through second place. Spartacus, also a second place team with Lizardmen. He pretty much obliterated Nuru in both the games that they played. Uh, Nuru had Undead, and it, it's, Lizardmen are a dominant team in a Bash matchup, to be honest. 
so it's not looking good for Yatsik. And this is it, he's got four guard biggins, he's got a tackle blitzer, and he's got the leader thrower. A few people took the leader th thrower. I, it's okay, it lets, you, it lets you cram in a troll, basically, right? Um, normally, you would drop the troll down to a lineman and get the third reroll. And so, by dropping the reroll, upgrading the troll, then you make up for the, the leader thrower. But honestly, I'm not sure that the troll is an upgrade. Um, <laughs> that's the problem. It's very dodgy, but completely normal orc team. And I think he's gonna. Well, he might he might struggle less than you'd expect versus lizards, but, but maybe not. Maybe he'll struggle more. This is a very strange lizard man build. And honestly, Spartacus I think has played it great. He's only got three block three block Saurus. That's unbelievable. I would have discarded this as unplayable. A real bad build. I did not like it um, in the previews and stuff, but then honestly, he's played it really well. He's always getting the guards in to get the hits with the blocks. He's putting the tacklers and the dodge players. The problem is with it being so skill intensive, eventually things will break down. Either the dice will or tiredness or mistakes and and just the dice, you know, like at the end of the day, that people will, will hit them with, you know, hit the guard players with knockdowns and you'll... It's, it's so... It's, it's it's weird. It's a weird build. I still prefer block, but I don't hate this as much as I thought I would. Um, then he's gone for the 12th player, the two re-rolls, and the apple, completely standard build um, in terms of players. So yeah, I mean, Spartacus is definitely my pick to win that. But um, all these games are going to be really close, by the way. I think I think the highest favourites are only going to be 60-40 uh, at best, really. They, these are all going to be super close games. Incredible tournament thus far and now we saw one of the this is probably the only one I'd say was a surprise a real surprise and even then again right not that much of a surprise Andrew's a really good player uh, but right you know also a really good player with necromantic Andrew has imperial mobility outrageous that he beat bright um, and he's playing uh, so a runner up there up against Zerpils who won his group Zerpils with Skaven has already beaten Imperial Nobility once. He beat Ratamo in the round of 32. So we can have a look at Andre's team here. And this is what I would call the gold standard build. This is how I would build them. Uh, max out your guard, six guard. That's the most you can get by using the secondary on the thrower. Then a leader thrower for an extra reroll and dodge. Blitzers, blotches are great at low TV, right? So you get third reroll with having two. 13 players, you can foul a bit. I really do like this. Um, after, you know, after casting the World Cup and seeing the World Cup happen, I actually, actually think maybe a block ogre is better because to win, you've just got to get lucky with the ogre. That's how it feels. Because, you know, against other good players and stuff, it seems a bit, a bit rubbish. Um, now this is nearly a completely normal Skaven build. He's got 12 players, Apo, 3 rerolls, plus leader, so 4 rerolls. It's a good amount of rerolls, but a little bit brittle. He's got the standard block, strip, wrestle, but he hasn't got sidestep, he's got sprint, uh, which is a little bit odd. He's dropped the mighty blow off the blitzer, he's got the guard blitzer and a juggernaut roger, so, you know, it's Skaven, right? Things can happen with Skaven, they're going to roll dice, and it's going to be hard. And honestly, Andri, he's got Imperial Nobility, so I don't fancy his chances. I don't fancy his chances at all of that. Um, right, that's, that's, that's the top half of the bracket. Now, um, we're looking at the bottom half, we've got Diamed came through as runner-up in his group. And he honestly he obliterated Nabolo in the two games. They were they were pretty brutal to watch. Incredible performance versus Nabolo group winner with Skaven. And he funnily enough Diamond was in Jonesy's group. And they all everyone in this group won one, drew one, lost one. And so they'll be having a rematch in the second round. Jonesy got past Allen's 76's uh, Undead, I think. And I think uh, Jonesy is Dark Elves. So we can have a look now at Diamed's build. 
I'm actually not really a fan of Diamond's build. This is funny, isn't it? I would think he's maybe the best player in this competition, but I really do prefer Davos' build to Diomed's. He's got a 13th player, which is good. And a lot, lots, lot, lots of it is the same, right? He's got the block ghoul the same as Davo. He's got a block wolf the same as Davo. He's got the four guard the same. He's got 13 players. He's got three rerolls. So what he's got is he's traded a block wolf for a wrestle ghoul and a 13th player. The problem is I don't feel like you get much from the 13th player. And it plays differently to Davo. Like Davo is constantly trying to leverage the block, the frenzy, the claw of the wolves. Whereas Diomed is, is using it more as a sweeper and like, you know, picking players off if he can with it. But he's it's more like of a backup and a really careful centerpiece. Whereas the fact that Davo's, you know, just constantly trying to extract value from two of them means he's more likely to extract value from one of them. And it means like a, an injury isn't quite as crippling. So I I do I don't like his build so much, but he's a great player, he plays it really well. And you know, at the end of the day, you often can't get both walls hitting anyway, so it's it's not like it's not terrible or anything. I just I prefer the Davo build. This is a very strange dark elf build here from Jonesy. Um, three dodge blitzers. He's taken the tackle a lot. What very few people do tackle, honestly, on like the uh, agility teams. Like even even the wood elves were like taking you know frenzy and sidestep and stuff rather than tackle. But he's got a tackler there. He's got a wrestle witch elf, which means one witch elf is unprotected. And he has the runner with leader. And honestly, the leader runner for three rerolls is amazing. I did strongly consider it. It's it's really good having three rerolls. But the problem is it's armor seven, well, armor eight plus. It will get targeted if possible. It's another player you've got to protect. I just don't like having it. It's, it's a weak point that can be exploited. And the same as the skillless witch, that, that means, you know, that's a nightmare. I think that's wild. Honestly, I think it's a really wild decision that you do a tackle blitzer over a wrestle witch elf. I think that's just a poor, bad decision, honestly. Now, he's done great, you know. He, w he won the group that Diomed was in. He's won his first round match. But I, I am not on board with a skillless witch elf. I, I just makes it way too dangerous to hit with and stuff. And I, I do not like it. Now, uh, this is, this could also be called an upset. Sergo, who qualified as runner-up, beat Kefog, who's my pre-tournament favourite. With Wood Elves, um, Sergal's got Orcs. And it was a bit of an upset, but again, not much, right? At the end of the day, once people are really good, which everybody in the top 16 are, it's not crazy to get these kind of upsets. You know, maybe k was only 60% to win that game, and uh, Sergal got it. Fair play to him. And then he's up against Niagara, a group winner, um, with Wood Elves. He beat the Orcs in a very... Uh, Interesting game. They were, they were two close run games that Iaga had versus Ivan Colin, so I might honestly, I think I'm going to pick Sergal to win this. Oh, by the way, Diomed to beat Jonesy. Uh, I think Diomed's great. I'm a bit of a fanboy of Diomed. <laughs> um, I think Sergal's probably favourite to beat Niagara here, uh, especially with this build. Not so good against the Bash teams, but against the Elves, he's got four block biggins, a mighty blow blitzer. And a block thrower, so he's got he's got load, you know, he's got the least reliability, the least unreliability. He doesn't have the troll that can throw the game. He's got loads of block. It's absolutely the most reliable team you can get. Three rerolls. It's really good at hunting down elves. And uh, yeah, that could be that could be a problem from Niagara. Niagara's gone for the same kind of roster as Stride that we saw with a tree and the two catches and the thrower. Leader, double wrestle, uh, sorry, double dodge, strip ball, and but what he, he hasn't got the double wrestle. He's given up one of the wrestlers to get mighty blow on the dancer, and this was devastating in one of his games versus Ivan Colin. He like he cast three black oak, uh, not black oak, biggins, biggin blockers. Sorry, they, that changed. Uh, <laughs> that's a relatively recent change, and uh, it still catches me out. And he made three Kazas with that. It was unbelievable. So, you know, that can absolutely win games, having that mighty blow. I'm not sure it's worth giving up, you know, wrestle and say sidestep on the dancer, but maybe it is, right? Removing players is super important for everybody. And speaking of removing players, what an amazing matchup we have here. Andy Davo versus Jimmy Fantastic, both group runners-up. 
which meant that I think Truk and Gorgo Bay had the absolute worst possible draws because they had to battle through us. <laughs> they had to beat both of us to even get to the quarterfinals. And then, you know, then they'd be playing everyone from there. So, yeah, really unlucky for Truk with Undead, got Devo and his Necromantic, and Gorgo Bay with Dark Elves, got me and my Dark Elves. So, I can show you the teams for this match which we've got Andy Devo here. I basically spelled out this rest, this roster looking at Diomeds. I think this is the best Necromantic roster. Devo was like third high, highest ranked NAF coach um, overall and number one Necro coach. He, he did fall down after Euro Bowl, but you know, it just shows how stupid the rankings are. I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock into NAF rankings. But I, I definitely one of the best players in the world is Devo, and this is going to be a very, very tough, very tough match. Um, I would absolutely put him as one of the favourites to win the competition. But you know what? I put myself as one of the favourites to win the competition as well. And uh, this is my Dark Elf team. It, again, I kind of alluded to this with the Wenteros build. I, I like this, you know, it's, it's very safe. I've got 12 players, so I could also foul War Dancers. I thought I liked that 12 player over the Apothecary. Also a bit stronger in an overtime format. The two rerolls is a little bit dodgy. And it's also a little bit dodgy only having one Wrestle Witch Elf. There are pros and cons to one block, one Wrestle. I feel like, you know, a bit, a bit like the Wolf kind of argument, right? If you can have the Wrestle in the right place all the time, you only need one Wrestler. But sometimes you don't have it in the right place and sometimes your opponent makes a mistake and it ends up that the block one's in the right place and so i do understand the argument for the double wrestle witch but most of the time if you're just attrition blitzing then you want frenzy and block for more chance of knockdowns and more chance of removing players and removals are one of the most important things in blood bowl so i, I like this roster for this event um i also kind of predictly correct Predictly, correctly predicted the meta, if you like, which I thought would be heavy on Dark Elves, Wood Elves, Skaven, and Necromantic. And out of those four teams, this is basically just the team I like the most and thought I'd probably be able to do the best with. Uh, I'm not a fan of Skaven. Necromantic I didn't do very well with in Super League. And uh, Wood Elves... Wood Elves... Do you know what? I didn't like that Wood Elves could just get beaten up. And that is what happened to Kefog in a few of his games and like a few other people like now. The Wood Elves have done great overall. Wood Elves have done great overall in this competition, but I just wasn't comfortable that I could, you know, I was more susceptible to just getting loads of players removed. And Dark Elves are a little bit res more resilient than Wood Elves. The problem is Wood Elves are great at one turning and now we've got a Wood Elf mirror of the last two, Serafino versus Olivier Dulac. Um, Serafino won a Wood Elf Mirror to get here versus Le Marzellaire and Olivier beat All World Alliance that somehow sneaked into the top 32. Olivier dispatched them not easily. Um, it was an incredible match, the first one. The second one was a great match and the third one also was. It was a hell of a series. Great effort by Jay Lee. Lots of swings and ups and downs but ultimately you know, the guy who had Wood Elves won. <laughs> so, um, we can have a look at the players now. Serafino apparently is on the Italian Euro Bowl team, so you know, another tabletop coach. He's got a very strange build. Um, this is very tuned into the one turn. We've got a grab tree, a frenzy blitzer, obviously the strip ball, the leader, they're normal, a couple of wrestles normal, but he's also got a sprint catcher, so yeah, I think I'd, I'd definitely prefer just two dodge binos rather than this sprint and this grab, but it does help him with a one turn. And the one turn is always critical, and that's the big weakness of me choosing Dark Elves. I honestly now regret Dark Elves and think that I should have taken Wood Elves. But, you know, it's too late for that. <laughs> too late to worry about that. And uh, here's Olivier Dwight. He's the number one ranked player on the NAF tabletop um, with Skaven. But now he's taken Wood Elves to this. When there's all the money's on the line, he's suddenly not such a, not such a Skaven coach. The problem with this build is that he has taken four catchers rather than two catchers and a thrower, and that means he's only got two rerolls because he hasn't got the leader. And also, he's given up the two dodge linemen to take this jump up tree, and I, I'm not a fan of that. But he's got six dodge, and he's got two rerolls, he's got the apple, 
what he does have is two side steppers which are both really nice it, you know if you watch the games I mean I've casted all the games and he was using the catches very well on defense you know to hold the sideline and stuff and just, you know using them on he, he was using them well but also it's great for the, the one turn isn't it both defending against it and doing it he's got two side steppers and a frenzy so he's got great one turning potential he's got good sideline control and uh, and he's got the tree man as well for the one turn defending the one turn but the jump up tree I'm not a fan of honestly I, I do think he'd have been better off with two dodge wood elves linemen to make up for the lack of re-rolls like I, I don't hate taking four catches over a leader and two plus a re-roll uh, plus a leader re-roll but I, you know because the extra dodge is like having extra re-roll anyway but he does seem a little bit susceptible to bad dice with only two re-rolls and uh, you know two dodge wood elves or a wrestle and a dodge would have helped it bad and these jump up I'm, I'm not a fan of the jump up but you know I'm not saying that that's terrible or anything and obviously Olivier is a great player he's got this far I'll, I'll back him to beat Serafino and uh, yeah, yeah I haven't predicted myself versus Dave or I, Honestly, in the interests of uh, tempering expectations to myself, I'll predict Dave O to win. Um, basically, he's got the more reliable high roll than I have, right? My Dark Elves aren't going to cast a bunch of wolves and flesh golems and stuff, whereas it's much more likely that he removes three or four players and, and I'm struggling no matter how well I play. So I'm going to go with that for that. And uh, whoever wins these games here, it's the same format, best of two and a half, essentially, right? You play two games, 16 turns. If somebody wins decisively, like a win and a draw, or two wins, then they win the tie. If it's two draws or a win for each side, regardless of scoreline, they will play a third game tiebreaker, which will have overtime enabled. So only five out of 16 games went to the uh, third match. I think this might, you know, might be higher with the round of 16 because, you know, things should be closer, right? These should be the more the 16 better of the 32, uh, both teams and coaches and stuff. Or, so maybe it'll be a little bit closer than the round of 32 was. Who knows? We'll find out. And uh, yeah, the winner of the, the the eight winners will be in the quarterfinals. And then from that point on, we'll be in Montpellier. And myself, Miss Beltry and Andy Devo doing the commentary live from the proper TV studio. That's going to be incredible. The quarterfinals, semifinal and final and third place match will be condensed over a weekend. And it will be incredible. And the, these are all the rewards here. You can see 400 euros for the wins of these matches, um, minimum, and, and up to 800, 1300, 1800, and two and a half grand for the winner. So that's uh, pretty incredible. 8,000 euros total. And uh, yeah, there's the draw. And uh, that's that's the video. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.